Hallelujah. Matthew, the third chapter. Hallelujah. Matthew, the third chapter. Thank you, Lord. Just a couple verses and then we'll move on. I'll let you sit down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew 3 and 10. Praise God. Hallelujah. It says, And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down right. and cast into the fire. Indeed, I indeed baptize you with water under repentance. Yeah. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, who shall I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost Woo! and with fire. Woo! Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his right. floor and gather his wheat into his garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable. Father, Heavenly Father, I'm thankful for your work today, God. I'm thankful, God, for your people. I'm thankful, God, for the opportunity to gather in your name, Lord, to feel your presence. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, for the liberty that we feel, God, in you, Father. I thank you, Jesus, Hallelujah. And I ask you, God, Lord, I have nothing today, Lord, but I pray, Father, Lord, that you would speak through me, God, Lord, to live your word, Hallelujah, that it would strengthen and increase, Hallelujah, those that are hearing you. God, I ask your blessing now in your name, Jesus, and we give you all praise. Hallelujah, everybody said amen. 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 Hallelujah, you can be seated. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Matthew, we were reading uh, a familiar verse. Y'all can be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, and, and now also the axe is laid into the root of the trees. Hallelujah. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water. This is John. So I need baptized with water and under repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, who shoot, I am not worthy to bear. Right. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose sand is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, gather his wheat into a garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. I want to preach on this thought today. Waiting is what's happened to the fire. Waiting is what's happened to the fire. Uh, we, we, in Pentecost, you know, we we are known for the Holy Ghost. You know, you people, you, you tell somebody, you know, you're apostolic, you're Pentecostal, and uh, generally, you know, there's two things that everybody wants to talk about. They say, are you going to snake handlers? Uh, you know, or, or they are you going to tongue talkers? You know, uh, they, you know, they worried about snakes, and they worried about the Holy Ghost. Uh, now, they ought to have more worry about the snakes than the Holy Ghost, because I have never seen the Holy Ghost do anything bad to anybody. I mean, you never seen the Spirit of the Lord uh, harm anyone. Right. Now, I have uh, I have seen a lot of people delivered under the power of the Holy Ghost. I've seen the anointing of God break a bunch of yokes off of people. I've seen it reveal things in people's lives that they may not have wanted to reveal. But I've never seen the Holy Ghost do anything. The Bible said that, 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 that it's coming a time. Now, and we're in a generation right now where people are not uh, lovers of God's word. They're not lovers of the truth. Uh, we're at a point in time right now uh, that we're seeing people. Uh, I was reading a, 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 a part of a message that Francis Chan had ministered on. And, and he had spoke about um, uh, that he had went down and um, uh, uh, was uh, on a ship or somewhere. And, and he was looking. They had this uh, like a wave maker. You know, some of you guys may have seen the commercials. Uh, they're up on the ship. But they've got a machine that... They can ski, not ski, but uh, what are they, they doing? Surf on there with this wave maker. And they've got these, these, these places you can go to these wave pools and you can do the same thing. They have uh, what they call a, a man-made artificial wave. Right. And, and he began to think, you know, sometimes uh, in the church, if we're not careful, we'll, we'll begin to uh, follow, find ourselves uh, uh, riding and being satisfied with a, a man-made artificial wave. We'll, we'll, feel, uh, we'll feel something in the house of God. And I, I've seen it for time and time again. I, People come in and, and we prepare and we do all that we know to do. And I just be honest, uh, as a pastor, uh, carrying the burden and hurt, you know, the, the, the hurts, the wounds, and every little thing. You want everything to be perfect. You want every service to be a shouting service. You want every song to be perfect. Uh, you want the, the drum player to get his act together and get things get better. Right. Come on. Come on. That was the sound of that drum player today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want everything perfect. But we have to be careful that we're not creating man-made waves. I mean, we had more in the last few minutes of that, uh, at the end of those songs. The power of God moved in the last few minutes when there was not a song playing, when there was not music playing. The sweet, uh, the, uh, the power of God began to move through after the song was over. Uh, God began to move through because somebody was willing to heal. Somebody was uh, willing to not just have a manufactured 
move of God and fulfill the spot of glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah, the real fire. Amen. Hallelujah, Jeremiah 20 and 7. It says, Oh Lord, now I'm reading this is out of the New Living Translation. I've been doing a little reading out of this, and I don't normally do a lot of it, but today I have some of the scripture out of the New Living Translation. And uh, normally I'm a King James kind of guy. Uh, but but I was reading this, and, and, and it doesn't get that far off, but boy, it really helps us just open your understanding sometimes the way it brings it out. It says, Oh Lord, you misled me, and I allowed myself to be misled. You are stronger than I am, and you overpowered me. Now I am mocked every day. Everyone laughs at me. When I speak, the, uh, when I speak, the words burst out: violence and destruction. I shout, so these uh, I, violence and destruction. I shout, so these messages from the Lord have made me a household joke. But if I say I'll never mention the Lord or speak in His name, His word burns in my heart like a fire. It's like a fire shut up in my bones. I am worn out trying to hold uh, it in, and I can't do it. I have heard the many rumors about me. They call me the man who lives in terror. They threaten me. If you say anything, we will report it. Even my old friends are watching me, waiting for a fatal slip. He will trap himself, they say, and, and then we will get our revenge on him. But the Lord stands beside me, a great warrior. Before him, my persecutors will stumble. They cannot defeat me. Hallelujah. Reading about Jeremiah, and when you look at that, it brings it down into some plain English and, and just looking at really what's going on. God gave him a word. It was not Jeremiah's word, but it was God's word. And God's word comes forth about destruction and, and about things happening because of the sin of man. But you see, sometimes there's a waiting between God's word and what he does. And somehow or another, sometimes between the, the word of God and the, between what you know that God wants and, and between God's calling and his appointment, there's a waiting. And during that waiting period, sometimes people begin to lose the respect of God. We have had for generation after generation uh, people saying, oh, y'all been, you church people have been preaching God's coming and God's coming and he ain't come yet. Now we've got the world that has no reverence for God. We've got people that no longer, uh, they no longer are looking unto God and looking unto the household of faith as a place of respect. Yes, amen. I'm so many times in places where people know that I'm a minister and with no respect. They no longer like they used to do in the days of old where they would change the way they were talking or change right. what they were doing or, or right. try to at least refrain somewhat. But we're in a time where no one has respect uh, for the household of God. No one has respect for God's people, friends, for what's going on with the ministry. It's because there's the, a loss of the fire, the anointing of God is no longer uh, uh, pressing sometimes even in the household of faith because the, the household of faith has been like the world we've been waiting. All right. We've heard God say that He's going to have an unquenchable fire for those that are, are punished, but we've not seen it. We have often watched the wicked prosper. We have often, often watched those that would do things against us prosper. Those that would, would think that. And we're like, God, where is the revenge? Where is the where is your uh, coming? God, where is you? Where, when are you going to take care of things? Right. And I've come to this point where Jeremiah, he says, he said, they're now mocking me. Turn your TV on and watch the news and see if they're not mocking Christians nowadays. Yes, yes. Turn the television on and watch this for a few minutes and see if the church has not become a joke to this world. Oh, yeah. Because they lost the fire in the waiting. They lost the passion of God in the waiting. Jeremiah himself come to that point. He said, I, hey, if I would just close my mouth, I would no longer say the words that you give to God. I, I would just no longer speak out the things because God would speak to him. He brought forth God's word. He said, I would to just close my mouth. He said, but I can't. But I can't. Why? Because he knew the reality is God is speaking something. The reality is, church, we are in a generation at a time where everybody's offended by every little old thing and, and things aren't uh, always politi politically correct. I try to be so careful as I'm on Facebook. I, I don't want to get into any kind of a political garbage. I don't want to get into no mudslinging of any kind. I'm so cautious. But sometimes our righteous indignation wants to rise up and say, what's wrong with you people claiming to be Christians? Sometimes our righteous indignation wants to say, when are you going to stop serving man and start serving God? 
And the realization, realization, he says, but I will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Hallelujah. Who is he talking about? Everyone that is not blood bought. Hallelujah. Everyone that is not sold out and sanctified. Everyone that is not obeyed his word and obeyed his gospel. We are born with the privilege. We're in the United States of America. We don't have to hide the door of the household of faith. And we can't get people to come into the church. And we don't have to hide. I look at my brothers on, on the internet in, in, in the Philippines. They're standing in knee deep water to come to the house of God. Yes, yes. That's good. And I thank God for all you faithful. Most of y'all have been to a service today. I've done drove a lot of miles, and I'm thankful for the faithful. I'm, don't get me wrong, I am not throwing stones. I am, I am preaching what God has put in my heart. There are so many. There are so many that's got hung in the waiting. And even the church has lost the reality. The reality is, is our friends are going to go to hell. Our family members are going to go to hell. Our children are going to end up in hell. Our, our uncles and aunts and every one that we love, if they're not found uh, in the land, put the light, they not obey the word of God. And we've lost the fear and we've got hung in the waiting. And even ourselves, we stop believing that hell is real. Come on. And Jeremiah said, he said, there's been so much mocking that I want to just get over in the corner. I want to close my mouth. I don't want to pro- uh, proclaim all the words of God that he showed me. I would like it to be able to be quiet because I hear the rumors. I hear the things that are saying. I don't want to be But he said, but that word of God is like a fire shut up in my bones. I realize that people don't think Jesus, if I don't share God's word, they're going to go to hell. If we don't get a hold of the fact that people are going to go to hell. And we carry his word. We are the father of this generation and this day. Hallelujah, he said they mock me. They call me the man who lives in terror. Why? Because he proclaimed all the things that God was about to do. All right. But they're like, well, where is it? We tell people, you know, y'all don't like to preach plain. We tell people all the time. You don't serve God, you're not. I tell them to jail all the time. I say they don't even have to serve God. Don't be a hypocrite. You might as well go on and party it up. Get high as high if you want to. And if you don't have to halfway serve God, if you look warm, you're going to the same hell. You might as well have fun now. People say, well, that ain't real good preaching. Well, that's just the truth. It's the truth. Because hell is for real, and His grace is sufficient. His grace is abounding. And though we make so many mistakes, though we, we, we are so troubled on every hand, though the enemy is persecuting us, he's coming against our mind and our thought, and, and, and our homes and our lives and our children, our finances, and so many things, and we want to sometimes just sit down and sit for a little bit and say, Lord, I just want to keep my mouth shut. i got so many problems with my own God. God, i got so much going on in my own Lord. I just want to close my mouth. Fear cannot 
keep you. Only love, only love will keep you. Hallelujah. First Samuel 10 and 20 says, So Samuel brought all the tribes of Israel before the Lord, and the tribe of Benjamin was chosen by Lot. Then he brought each family of the tribe of Benjamin before the Lord, and the family of uh, Matrix was chosen. And finally Saul, son of Kish, was chosen from among them. But when they looked for him, he had disappeared. And they asked, Lord, where is he? And the Lord replied, he is hidden among the stuff. So they found him and brought him out. And he stood head and shoulders above anyone else. Then Samuel said to all the people, this is the man the Lord has chosen as your king. No one in Israel is like him. And all the people shouted, Live long the king. Long live the king. This is a story of, of God's people. They, they, they probably even called it and said that in their wickedness they decided they wanted a king instead of just a prophet. They wanted a man to speak over them and tell them what to do and to lead them. And, and, and the man of God said, God said, and that's not what he said in order. He set a prophet to be over you. But they wanted a king. And he said, well, because you want a king, God said, I will choose you a man. If we were reading the chapter before, we'll find uh, Saul as a young man. His father's mules were missing, his donkeys were missing, and, and he went forth. And, and as he went in to look at uh, his father, sent him out. He went on several days' journey. And as he got to a, a certain place, and he found himself, uh, never could find him, he found himself uh, around the man of God. And God already spoke unto Samuel and said, I want you to anoint him, but he's going to be king. And I won't get into the whole story, but the gist of it is this. When he finally got Saul, and Saul was about to go back, he told him, he says, here, this is what's going to happen. I want to get you alone just for a moment. He spoke to him. He said, God has chosen you, and he has anointed you. And today I anoint you. He, he brought out a little thing of oil, and he poured it upon his head, and he anointed him. And he said, today these things are happening. When you leave here, you're going to find some people as you're going back in your journey, and they're going to speak to you, and they're going to tell you that your father's already found those donkeys, and he's worried about you now. And then as you go there, you're going to see three men. They're going to be uh, carrying some wine, some bread, and, and music, and they're going to give you two loaves of bread. Receive those loaves. He said, you're going to go a little further, and you're going to find some prophets that are prophesying. And you will prophesy with them today. And you will know when these things come to pass. And sure enough, each thing, one by one, took place. Even so much that the people looked and said, Does now Saul, one of the prophets, he prophesied with the prophets. God had called him. God had anointed him. God had chosen him. He was selected by God to bring forth God's rule. But when it come time, somewhere between the anointing, God's purpose, was hidden amongst the stuff. There's a waiting. He told him, he said, I want you to go and wait seven days and I will come and tell you what God wants you to do. There's a waiting period. Sometimes we feel the anointing of God. We feel that calling of God. We feel that direction of God. There's a waiting and sometimes we get the dull of flames of God. We get the dull of the fiery anointing. That waiting period where God is seeing what you are made of. That waiting period where God is seeing are you acting out of emotion? Are you acting The Bible said that where a man's heart is, his treasure is also. Yes. I mean, there's a waiting period between the time you feel the power and anointing of God. And often the fire is lost in the waiting. Yes. Often that passion of God is lost in the waiting. You have thought after he had already seen these things come to pass. And God has spoke through him and prophesied amongst the prophets. You would think you'd be so excited. But when it comes time. He wasn't there. Hallelujah. When it comes time, he, he had something else to do. He was hidden amongst the stuff. There are several different interpretations. That a different, uh, uh, some of them call it stuff. Some says baggage. Some says uh, some of the equipment. Didn't say anything that he was hidden around was wrong. Didn't say that he went out into the depths of sin. Didn't say that he went out running with a harlot. He got caught up. And the stuff around him during the waiting. He got caught up and where he was no longer focused on the purpose that God had for him. He was caught up in the waiting with some stuff, some baggage, some equipment, with whatever it was. He was, he was hidden. They couldn't find him. We look in the Bible in the garden when Adam and Eve had sinned. 
And the Bible said the voice of the Lord come through in, in the cool of the day. And he said, Adam, where are thou? Where are you at, Adam? And Adam said, we've hid ourselves because of our day. So the trick of the enemy is continuing to get us hiding from the presence of God All so right. we do not walk in his purpose. All right. Hidden. Hallelujah. Matthew 13 and 44. Also the New Living Translation. It's the uh, parable of the hidden treasure. And the pearl, it says, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, uh, he hid it again and sold everything he owned uh, to get enough money to buy the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. And when he discovered the pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. Hallelujah. Verse 47, it says that again, the kingdom of heaven is like a fishing net that is thrown into the water and caught every fish of every kind. And when the net was full, they dragged it up onto the shore, sat down and sorted the good fish into crates and threw the bad ones away. This is the way it will be at the end of the world. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous, throwing the wicked into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Do you understand all these things? Yes, they said, we do. And he added, every teacher of religious law who becomes a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like a homeowner or the good man of the house who brings from this storeroom new gems of truth as well as old. We're reading, it says, says, talks about that first, uh, it says that the man, he, he went forth and he looked and they said he found this treasure that he had, uh, in the field was hidden. And in his excitement, he hid it again. I think that's what happens sometimes when we get to feel that great joy of God when we first come to the Lord. First, we first receive the Holy Ghost. So many, when they first go down into that water in baptism, they feel that passion. They feel that fire. Uh, a lot of times people tease new converts because they're so excited they can't understand why everybody else is on that same level. They're so, they set so much passion. See, sometimes we, we hide it back. Put it back where it was with anticipation of selling off. You see, sometimes we get to the point where we start selling out our lives and we realize there's something we don't want to sell out. Some people never get enough sold out that they can go back and buy the treasure that they first found. Some people, they start the journey. That there's the parable of the seeds and the souls. There's some that's sown in your own store. There are some seeds that are sown in much stony ground, but there's some that's by the wayside that there's some in good ground. See, there's a whole lot of folk. They, they feel that power of their anointing. They feel that excitement of God. They, they get a hold of that they found that hidden treasure. And in the process, that waiting period of selling out everything, so you can't buy this gift of God. God does not uh, want anything financially. There's not something you can uh, buy with, your, with, with finances. But He wants you to want Him. All God ever wants from mankind is that love and that passion. He wants that relationship with you and I. He wants us to be willing to sell out. So that there's nothing that there's nothing that we would have between Him and I. There's nothing that would hinder me from wanting to be in His presence. I look around the room. Some of you guys today are here for a reason. You are so in love with God. You've not only been to one service. You hit another. You come in here, you're giving with your finances, you're giving with everything, God. You have a lot of passion for Him. You're doing all you know to do because you have sold out everything for that pearl of great price. You have found that hidden treasure and you've sold out everything so that you can maintain the fire of the Holy Ghost. John, we read it in the beginning. John said, There's one coming out of me whose shoe is flashed. I'm not worthy to bear. I'm not worthy. I'm not even worthy to carry his shoes. Right. But he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Some of you have found the fire and the Lord of God. You've not let it go and you've given all. Hallelujah. Why do we struggle sometimes to give all? Why is it sometimes we don't realize just how valuable the gift that he has given us is? We no longer have to worry about buying anything because you can't do it on your own. You can't buy it and you can't sell it. It's a gift of God. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. But somewhere in the waiting, sometimes we forget how beautiful He is. We forget how beautiful serving God is. Sometimes in the waiting, we forget that He can do anything. Sometimes in the waiting, we forget that He can do anything. So 
what do you mean? You can heal the sick. Sometimes we're waiting, we forget. And we get so used to everyone uh, always trusting. And I'm, I believe in going to the doctors. Don't get me wrong. But we get so used to the doctors that we don't even trust God. I get a headache, I promise y'all. I keep the side of my bed of soup there without having broken in it. I wake up some mornings, my head splitting open, I can't even see. I can't function. I take two of those and lay down for an hour and I'm back up and moving. I believe them. You know how much I believe in them? When they run out, I go buy another box to have them sitting there. So we trust the things of this world more than we do. Trusting in our Savior. Sometimes we don't trust in a day. They say, Lord, give me the words to use me in the issue of today. God, when I'm out and I'm on my job, I'm out at Walmart, I'm, I'm at the grocery store. Maybe one of you babies get the pants going through you. Whatever. You've got other functions that I need. Share your testimony. You've got that little something that I need. This person needs you. How many times have we let that go to the people around? Whatever the situation is, when we come to Jeremiah, I would just close my mouth. Because I know people are tired of hearing that your judgment's coming and nobody like see it. Eventually, God's judgment coming that day. They all are believers. You see the process, Jeremiah got in prison. He got beaten. He got abused. So we may go through some things, church, if we're going to stand for you. We may go through some things, and it ain't always easy, it's not always rosy. I don't find anywhere in the New Testament people who were promised a rosy a journey on this thing if we were sold out in you know? I find I find in the Word of God, he says, he says, Paul, I'm going to show you how many things that you're going to have to suffer for my name's sake. We live in America, we're so blessed. Amen. Have so many options. I, I speak a lot of that for the Francis Chan. He went into Asia and he was talking to the people there and they were asking how churches were here. He said, well, you know, we have a lot of different churches. And, you know, people have come to a church and they may decide that they don't want to go to this church because this church over here has a better uh, kids program. Or over here, this church has got a better nursery. He said, and they begin to just laugh. Now, are you kidding me? Because if they actually confess that they're serving God, if they love Jesus, they could be in prison. They could be beaten. They could have to take it away from them. And they just laugh. So are you kidding? People choose churches according to the uh, to the to the benefit package of what the church has to offer. Yeah. Rather than choosing them once. All right. We stand in time. Yeah, we're not careful when we lose the fire in the way. But I want to encourage you today. I, I, I have a, a church full of, 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 of people that are in love with God today. I didn't know why the Lord was giving me this message. I said, Lord, this is not a sinner message. I didn't understand. I feel like I've wrestled with God. From last night all the way to this morning early, I left out there wrestled with God. I don't know why. Because I was expecting, we, we had anticipation of those that were supposed to be here tonight. I, I wanted to preach a same message. The Lord brought us to be here today to remind us all. We can't lose that passion in the way. The judgment is coming. Yes. And he expects us to carry his work and not just carry the flame with the fire and shut the inside. Burning desire and passion. So as we're closing, come on, stand. As we're closing today, can I encourage us? Maybe we all take a moment if you're able to get to the Just gather around and pray for a minute. Come on, let's talk to the Lord. Ask God to stir up that Jesus. And you may go real low out on the fire today. Everything's going great. That's fantastic. Come pray for somebody that needs it.